Hey guys, I have some super awesome, cool news to share with you today. This is the first episode of my brand new series, The Rundown. In this series, I'm going to show you each of the towers in Tower Defense Simulator. I'm going to go over their stats, give you general strategy advice for using the towers, show you what skins are available, share some trivia information, and finally give you my overall opinion of the tower. All of this information has been taken from the official Tower Defense Simulator wiki. I'll put the link to that website in the description below. Be sure to visit that for all of your TDS questions. It's a great source of information about the game as well as a place for you to connect with other fans. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The tower I'm going to be covering in this video is the Accelerator. The Accelerator is a hardcore tower that attacks in delayed bursts, dealing a massive amount of damage. Instead of having a fire rate, this tower attacks in ticks, each tick being an instance of damage. Now, how much damage it does, I'll explain in a minute. There's a delay before it attacks its first zombie, and the tower will focus on one target, switching to another if the previous target is killed or leaves its range. The accelerator fires in bursts before waving its hand, indicating that the ray gun needs to recharge. Or possibly just saying hi to the zombies, we don't know for sure. It's currently the only tower in the game that can be purchased for hardcore gems, and it costs 2500 Now, let's talk about the stats. This tower is going to cost $3,500 a place and will sell for one $1,166 at its base level. It's a ground placement tower and has a placement limit of 8. The level 1 upgrade costs $600 and adds 3 range. The level 2 upgrade costs $1,200, adds 2 range, and lengthens the burst time from 6 to 6.5. The level 3 upgrade costs $3,000 and simply adds 6 damage per tick. The level 4 upgrade costs $9,500, increases the range by 2, and increases the tick speed from 0.2 to 0.1. And the level 5 upgrade, supercharging everything, costs $25,000 and adding 2 range, 9 damage, increasing the tick speed from 0.1 to 0.05, decreases the charge time from 4 to 2, and increases the burst time from 6.5 to 12. Here is the stats table from the wiki to give you a snapshot image of how the tower changes at each level. Now we can use this to answer the age old question, is it better to place a group of low level accelerators or place one, level it up, and then place another? Notice from the chart that the DPS doesn't really change until you get to level 3, and even then, not by much. This tower doesn't see any significant increase to its stats until level 4, which means that if you're trying to get a DPS of about 99, you'd have to spend $18,000 on one tower. Or, you could spend that same $18,000 to add 5 more towers at level 0 and get 150 DPS. Now, the only drawback I see from doing this is you won't get the same range coverage. In this case, I'd recommend placing 6 accelerators and then upgrading them one at a time to level four. I don't recommend upgrading all of them to level one and then all of them to level two and so on because there just isn't much of a difference between each of those levels. Now, I'm sure you've noticed the DPS at max level is an absolutely insane 428. This is the highest DPS of any tower in the game. Just to compare that to something we all know, the range and the fire rate are exactly the same of both the max minigunner and the max accelerator. But while the total damage of the minigunner is four, it's a stunning 25 for the accelerator. And that's why some people call the accelerator the Thanos minigunner. Don't look that up. You're going to want to tap into that power by the time you get to the final waves. But it costs so much money to get there. I'm simply recommending that you don't save for just that. So those are the stats for the accelerator. Now let's talk about some general strategy advice for using it. One thing I could say right off the bat to pick up from our conversation about how expensive the upgrades are, you're probably going to want to use a farm with this tower. The farm is a great great way to get a bump in cash at the start of each round to help you get the accelerator to those higher levels faster because that's really where it's going to be most effective. The accelerator can deal with hordes of zombies by transferring its attack between them without penalties. It doesn't lose damage and it doesn't lose fire rate by doing this. The tower is great against slow mobs if the targeting is set to strongest and a really effective way to use the accelerator is to pair it with the DJ so that it gets a boost to its low range. If the accelerator is boosted by the commander, the time between each burst is not decreased, but the tick time is. So the tower does get a fire rate boost from the commander. Fast zombies like the glitch, error, circuit, or shock will be able to outrun the accelerator's charge up time unless it's placed just right. You can counter this by using the freezer, frost blaster, or electro shocker to slow these enemies down so that the accelerator can charge up. Should this tower be used to activate hidden wave? The accelerator can be helpful with its high DPS against enemies like Fallen King and the creator, but because of its charge time, if you get really unlucky 
it might delay the progression of waves from happening quickly. I wouldn't recommend using it to try and trigger a hidden wave, but if you're using it in just a regular game, I'd say use a loadout like Soldier for Early Waves, Farm for Money, Commander for the Fire Rate buff, DJ for the Range buff, and Accelerator for mid to late game would be good. Now let's move on to the skins. Unfortunately, there are currently no skins for the tower. The hazmat skin was added as a premium crate when the hardcore beta launched at the end of August, but as of the end of October, it was removed. For now, it looks like you're just going to have to stick with the original skin, which doesn't look too bad in my opinion. Now let's go over some trivia about this tower. It currently uses the developer exclusive War Machine upgrade pictures, and the tower's plasma gun is loosely based on the gluon gun from Half-Life. Here's some images of that gun that I pulled from the internet, and I can confirm it's the same. And now for my much sought after opinion about the tower. I'm just going to say it. I love it. I did not grind hardcore for the gyms to buy it. I spent the Robux, pay to win, but I think it's worth it. I use it in all my regular games now. Like I said earlier, you really need a DJ booth to get the most out of it. Otherwise, it's kind of limited to just the zombies near it. And if you're playing on a map that doesn't have a path that goes back and forth, they can get away from you pretty quickly. As for my personal loadout that I use with it, I don't like to bring Commander and DJ because I want more firepower. So I think it's best to coordinate with your teammates so one of you brings a Commander and the other brings a DJ. Then you can stick another good mid to late game tower in your lineup like the turret or the ranger. I haven't tried to work this tower into a hardcore strat yet because I want to get one for you guys that doesn't use it, but I have a feeling it's going to make beating hardcore much easier. Because there's more waves, there's more time to make money, which means I'll be able to max out my accelerator sooner and actually bring the full force of that mighty tower down on the zombies' heads. So in conclusion, is this tower hot or not? I'm going to say hot very hot. Even if you only take it to level 4, you still get one of the best DPS returns for your money in the game. Its only real weakness is low range, which can be countered by using the DJ, and even the commander can help bring its fire rate back in line with some of the other late game towers. And if you're playing on a team and someone else is using a tower like Freezer or Electroshocker, it's going to do even better. But don't just take my word for it. Go ahead and pick it up yourself and let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you like or dislike about the tower? Do you think it's too strong or not strong enough. And that does it for episode one of the Roundup, the Accelerator Tower. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button with your forehead, hit that subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications however you can so you don't miss any of my amazing upcoming content. And of course, join my growing Discord community. You can do that at discord.gg slash just Harrison things. I will see you guys next time. Take care, be safe, and never forget what I always say. Peace.